Test 4. Repeat sentence. Page 118. 1. Studies suggest there may be a correlation between educational achievement and family size. 2. Tomorrow's lunchtime seminar on nuclear engineering has been postponed. 3. During that period, heavy industry grew rapidly in the north of the country. Four. Students must hand in their assignments by Friday. Five. Most students on last year's course did well in this module. Six. Tuesday's lecture on social psychology will now take place in the central hall. Seven. Anyone who has a problem with their accommodation should speak to the welfare officer. Eight. 
The fertile plains in the east of the region provide excellent land for farming. Nine. Opposition to the government's tax policies was widespread across business sectors. Ten. Students with queries about this term's timetables must speak to their tutor immediately. Test 4. Retail Lecture. Page 122. 1. So today we're continuing to talk about the social history of foodstuffs, and we're going on to consider next the importance of salt and the significant role it has played. Salt was a highly valued commodity in ancient times, not because it made food taste nicer, but because of the way it could be used to preserve food. This meant that people were not so dependent on seasonal variations in what was available for them to eat. They could preserve what they produced and consume it as required. It also meant that food could be transported long distances. Salt was not easy to obtain, and so prices for it were high. It was often necessary to transport it long distances, and it is believed that one of the reasons for building some of the roads that led to the ancient city of Rome 
was to make it easier to bring salt to the city from various parts of the Roman Empire. Roman rulers took financial advantage of the population's need for salt. When they wanted to raise money for some war or another, they raised the price of salt. Elsewhere, salt was important too. In Africa, for example, caravans consisting of up to 40,000 camels are said to have traveled 400 miles across the Sahara to transport salt to the inland markets of places like Timbuktu. Two. So today we're going to talk about children's literature and the role it plays in society. Throughout history, adults have used the power of stories to entertain and amuse their children. But stories are not used merely to entertain youngsters. They have a significant educational purpose. They serve to teach the moral values of their society. In sociological terms, stories are one of the means by which children are socialised. How does this work in practice? Well, it often makes use of heroes, the characters in the stories who the children will admire and want to be like. The heroes of children's stories, therefore, exemplify the qualities valued by that society. They will typically demonstrate courage in the face of difficulty, honesty, consideration for others, loyalty to their family and friends, a respect for work and so on. You can see this happening from the fables of ancient societies through fairy tales and folk tales right up to modern day children's stories. For example, the hard working ant in Aesop's fable is shown to succeed in comparison with the grasshopper who spends the summer singing and has nothing to eat when winter comes. Similarly, it is Cinderella, the honest, hard working sister, who wins the prince rather than her cruel, lazy stepsisters. However, there is still usually something to entertain children even in the most morally instructive of stories. Three. This week I'd like to start by talking a bit about electric vehicles. Although we tend to think of electric cars as being something completely modern, they were in fact some of the earliest types of motorised vehicle. At the beginning of the 20th century, electric cars were actually more popular than cars with an internal combustion engine, as they were more comfortable to ride in. However, as cars fuelled by petrol increased in importance, electric cars declined. The situation became such that electric vehicles were only used for certain specific purposes, as forklift trucks, ambulances and urban delivery vehicles, for example. Although electricity declined in use in road vehicles, it steadily grew in importance as a means of powering trains. Switzerland, for example, was quick to develop an electrified train system, encouraged in this, no doubt, by the fact that it had no coal or oil resources of its own. Nowadays, there is renewed interest in electricity as a means of powering road vehicles. Why is this the case? Well, undoubtedly, economic reasons are of considerable importance. The cost of oil has risen so sharply that there is a strong financial imperative to look for an alternative. However, there are also environmental motivations. Emissions from cars are blamed in large part for, among other things, the destruction of the ozone layer and the resultant rise in temperatures in the polar regions. A desire not to let things get any worse is also encouraging research into designing effective electric transport. Test 4. Answer short question. Page 123. 1. What is the word in geometry for a shape that has three sides? Two. What do you call the alphabetical list at the end of a textbook that tells you where to find specific information? Three. What is the word for the place where a river starts? Four.
Four. Who is the main journalist responsible for producing a newspaper or magazine? Five. A business doesn't want to make a loss. What does it want to make? Six. What is the economic sector that deals with farming? Seven. What do you call the very long essay that students have to write for a doctoral degree? Eight. What is the word for a period of one hundred years? Nine. At what ceremony do students receive their degree or diploma at the end of their period of study? Ten. What do we call the date that a piece of work must be finished by? 